Good morning booktube. I just wanted to do a very quick book review for you today. I had been alluding to this in previous videos that I would get around to this. Um, so this is on The Red Prince, John of Gaunt by Helen Carr. Um, this is by One World Publications and I am not sure if this is out in the US yet so apologies if it isn't. Don't watch if you're worried. Um, if my review might sway you if you are intending on purchasing this, but um, I'm going to go ahead and review it anyways. So um, when I do a review uh, or when I am reviewing um, medieval histories, I don't, I'm, I just want to insert a disclaimer here. I'm not a medieval expert. I'm just an enthusiast and only very recently within the past couple of years did I start um, uh, really digesting um, works on, on medieval histories. So I'm not an expert and I don't necessarily review um, or look out or critique um, facts about events as much as I do the arguments and aims of, of the author just purely because I'm not an expert when it comes to these facts. But maybe, you know, once I do get this knowledge base under my belt, then I will be doing. But anyway, so yes, my reviews will focus on does the author achieve what it, what they set out to do in, the, in their aims, what they discuss in the summary of, of what they hope to portray, and then of course, you know, writing style references, notes on sources, uh, typos, things like that. So that's what I'll be doing. So with the physical aspects of the book itself, I think it's beautiful. Um, if we remove this jacket here, you'll see a beautiful, can't remove it, <laughs> just a beautiful red cover there. And then of course, I really like the, um, the images on the cover as well. So you've got John of Gaunt there, you've got the seal of the Order of the Garter. Um, and then, of course, the name itself. You've got a, a lovely sort of medieval style font. I feel like I'm staring at the sign of a pub. And then, you know, the name I think is very clever, The Red Prince. I think the author is trying to do a play on um, his brother, The Black Prince, but also, you know, with John of Gaunt being the Duke of Lan Lancaster, the famous symbol is the Red Rose of Lancaster, hence the Red Prince. I didn't, I've never heard him called this before, so maybe this isn't, um, Maybe this isn't the author's title for him, but if it is, I would I think that's very clever. Um, maybe you can correct me in in the comments if it is well known. <laughs> um, but yes, I, I thought that was very clever. So with the um, purpose of this book, so this is a biography and a narrative history, and the author uh, makes it quite clear, you know, in the summary that um, John of Gaunt gets a lot of bad press um, from his contemporaries, but also from, you know, um, historians. And uh, there's uh, bad press in terms of um, the peasants' revolt. Was he too haughty, too powerful? Was, was his main pursuit, you know, glory, wealth, and fame? Was he after his nephew's throne? Um, and uh, I think Helen, um, Helen Carr does a good job of narrating events from John of Gaunt's perspective and, and achieves her goal of um, showing him as a multifaceted individual rather than just all of those things. So, um, you know, she starts by um, discussing how John of Gaunt, you know, he's the, the younger son of a king and has no business being on the English throne. Um, but he was also fiercely loyal to his brother, Edward the Black Prince, and he made a vow to him that he would protect Richard II. And, you know, uh, through the events discussed in this book alone, I think, you know, she does a very good job of indicating, you know, that he was, he was loyal to his family, even though Richard II was a, <laughs> in, insert your favorite expletive here, um, but, uh, you know, then of course, on the flip side, there's, you know, what makes him a very good me um, member of his own family, um, you know, fiercely loyal to the crown and his family also makes him um, one of the reasons why he is so hated by um, individuals during the Peasants' Revolt. And then of course, um, 
you know, she looks at events um, from his perspective. You know, he was, as a younger son of a king, he had no business being on the throne of England. However, there was there were points when he was younger where, you know, there were discussions that he would be put on the throne of Scotland. And then, of course, the discussion of, um, you know, him having the kingship of Castile. And that became his lifelong ambition and dream. Uh, and it's through that lifelong ambition and, and that dream for the pursuit of Castile that um, we see him as overly ambitious, greedy, and um, where he demonstrates his most folly. It was through um, his pursuit of this where we see a massive loss of life, um, you know, his failure to, to, to actually obtain the king, the kingdom of Castile, where we see him... Um, at his weakest. Now, having said all of that, while I do think it is a very good narrative history, it is quite short, and I think that she could have done a lot more in terms of expanding on her points and her arguments. I think there were at, cer at certain points in this book where I thought it almost came across as a personal defense of John Acant's character. Um, so, for instance, there's a point where um, she's, you know, discussing how um, his contemporaries were gossiping that he had started his relationship with Catherine Swinford while his first wife Blanche was still alive and he you know she she simply says this is not the case um, he proclaimed on his death deathbed to the Pope that he he didn't start his relationship with Catherine until after um, Blanche had died and while we should you know take this as weight to um, truth to this you know medieval characters took their their deathbed oaths very seriously um i don't think we can 100 percent say for certain that that's not the case um and then of course i think when she is discussing um i i think she has to balance a very fine line when she is discussing john of gaunt um when it comes to um his you know, ambition for the throne of Castile. Um, you know, this is a look at events through his perspective, seeing things through John of Gaunt's mind. And I think at points during this book, um, there is some sympathetic language. But again, I think it's very difficult not to do that when you are looking at things from his perspective. You know, she wants us to appreciate, um, or at least be not not empathetic, but understand things from his perspective, how depressed he was, um, you know, the, you know, he can't, having to come to terms with the fact that he had failed at his lifelong goal. On the flip side, though, you know, his determination um, and his lack of foresight, not necessarily his lack of foresight, but his one, his single mindedness in his pursuit of this led to a massive loss of life. And uh, I think, you know, while she does a good job of describing that, I think at the same time, um, it does come across as a personal defense of, of his character. And we need to, you know, take all of his personality traits in, into consideration here. But um, I, you know, having said all of that, there were at points during this book where I really appreciated her um her examination of the more comical side of events, such as when she's describing how he found out that Richard II, um, uh, you know, ordered his execution after a failed, you know, a, a false um, attempt against Richard II's life. And he basically just sighed in exasperation. You know, there wasn't necessarily any fear. And uh, that's because this man, John of Gaunt, had a lot of, you know, he's no He's no um, stranger to having death threats or, you know, um, threats against his safety. So when that had happened and knowing the kind of person that Richard II was, um, I, it was just very funny the way she described it. And um, I did appreciate that. It breathes life into these characters who are, you know, so far removed from our own mentalities in the present day. So anyways, um, one of the other things that I didn't like about this book is the amount of typos that there were. And I think that the publisher could have done a much better job at editing this before it was released. So that was, a, you know, something that I was looking at. 
Um, so I would have rated this a 3.5. I think my review, my personal rating was less than what I've seen on, say, Goodreads for other books that I've I've reviewed. I, I tend to rate higher than, than other um, reviewers. So having said that, I do still recommend this. It's a great narrative history if you're not familiar with John of Gaunt or if you just want to pick this up and have an enjoyable read. It certainly was that. Um, I just thought, again, that the you know, there was some objectivity issues and, and the typos that really brought this score down for me. And uh, of course, it could have been fleshed out more. So that's my review. Um, I, you know, hope that uh, you do pick this up anyways. I'm not saying I don't recommend this book. I, I do. Um, and uh, if you uh, do have anything that you want to discuss about this book or about John of Gaunt in particular, um, let me know down in the comments. Uh, but anyways, have a great day, booktube, and a great week ahead. Thank you. Bye.